Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be coating the inside of the car with the sound and heat barrier. And really all I have left to do, I've already scuffed the whole inside of the car, but I need to mask it off. I need to mask off the holes going into the engine bay and just need to get everything ready and cleaned up with wax and grease. As you saw a couple weeks ago, I did scuff it and I did get rid of all the factory sound deadening. The reason I got rid of all that factory sound deadening, like I said before, is this car was a theft car. It didn't have any doors on it. It was in Florida. And when I got it, it had, you know, it still had residual water inside of it. So, um, you know, I just didn't want all that matte. It was very soft. It had moisture absorbed in it. And I'm guessing that it probably would have had a very weird smell. So this is just kind of a precaution. Plus it'll look really, really good. Um, doing this before I glue the carbon fiber roof on, I could glue it on, but I'm gonna coat the upper pillars on the inside of the upper pillars. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't really want any of that sound barrier or heat barrier on the carbon fiber. It has a nice matte finish. There'll be a headliner, but when I pull the headliner, you'll be able to see the carbon fiber. So let's get this thing mass off, cleaned up, ready to go and get this 100% done on the inside. So what I'm really gonna focus on is I'm gonna put sound ending throughout the whole car, but I'm gonna just really focus the heat barrier on the tranny tunnel, the firewall, and probably where you know the catalytic converters would go. I'm not gonna have catalytic converters, but um, you know there's exhaust going there and your feeder there, and probably these in this area, pretty much this whole front area, I guess, I'm gonna coat with the heat barrier. And then uh, whatever I have left over, I'll just continue back. Everything that I didn't want getting coated is now masked off. So one thing that I didn't mention is all the studs, you wanna mask those off with tape because it is a pain to get this stuff off of studs and it's just a lot easier taping them off. And as you can see, I just covered everything that I didn't want this stuff on. Another thing is anything that's gonna go outside. So this goes in, it blow into the bag and then you might get this overspray onto the sealer on the quarter panels and it is a nightmare getting this stuff off. So that being said, just cover all the holes going outside. I also covered the openings for the fuel tank. I'm gonna drop that fuel tank because I need to get a Hellcat one anyway, or when I get the Hellcat parts car, I'll just swap tanks and I'll swap all the stuff. But yeah, this thing is ready to go. All I have to do is mix it up. It's water-based, so it just pretty much, I stir that thing up with a stir stick, or uh, it comes with, the spray gun actually comes with a stir, so with a drill. I'll put the links in the description for this stuff. It's a sound ending and a heat barrier, so let's get this sprayed. And I must say, in a few hours, this is gonna be a night and day difference. Oh, another thing to note, the, you can only spray one every 24 hours. So I'm gonna do the sound barrier today, and then tomorrow I'm gonna to spray the heat barrier.
Just finished spraying the sound barrier on the inside of the car and it makes the inside look so good. So tomorrow I'll spray the heat barrier, but I just love how it all looks consistent and now it doesn't look like a bunch of, I, I don't know, after I pulled the sound ending and the silver and stuff, it was just really, really, I don't know, it wasn't appealing to the eye, but now it's all one color. It's all nice and textured. We have all the factory sound ending off of there and it should be really, really quiet. So this stuff supposedly makes the inside of your car quite a bit quieter and the heat barrier actually keeps the heat in during the winter and it keeps the AC in during the summer. So that's gonna be a plus as well, but I'll put a link for all the stuff in the description. The site has now had 24 hours to cure. What I'm gonna be doing is spraying in the heat barrier now and I'm really just gonna focus on the firewall and the floor. So I'm gonna start with the, and the training tunnel, but I'm just gonna start with this front area. And if I have any left, which I only used a gallon. So there's two gallons right there in each one. So I should be able to coat the whole inside of the car or the whole floor and the sides. I'm probably not gonna do anything with the top with the, uh, with the heat barrier and not have any issues. So let's get mixing this stuff up and uh, do this again. And then we could be done with the whole interior or the whole uh, coating on the inside of the car because that's one thing that I really wanted to get done just so it looks more consistent and it, it was more protected than it was before. I have just finished spraying the heat barrier coating inside the car and I like the color a lot better than the sound ending. So the sound ending had a little bit of a purplish tint to it and this is a lot just more matte black, which is really nice. It still has to dry for 24 hours like the other coating, but it just really evened everything out and I do like the consistency. The one thing I really don't like about this product, so, if I've used Raptor a lot before and this is a water-based product so it doesn't have a hardener it doesn't have anything like that so I'm not going to end up using this underneath the car I'm probably just going to end up using Raptor the only reason I wanted to use this was because it did have that heat protection and heat barrier as well as the sound deadening so that's going to be nice because there'll be carpet and everything will be covered inside the car. I don't think there'll be any issues. This almost seems like it's the same stuff that I used on my porch before I sold my house. It smells the same, has the same texture. I'm just spraying it instead of rolling it on with a roller. Um, but the Raptor has a hardener and when I spray it under the car, I won't have to worry about, you know, there'll be brake fluid and stuff like that, which I feel like this wouldn't, if there's a lot of chemicals, I feel like this would be very tough against them. So 
I think it's perfect for interiors, but I don't think it's I don't think it'd be very good for exteriors or underneath cars or something like that. So I'm really happy that this is done. I'm pretty much gonna end the video here now that we are done with the interior. So we all know what's next. I'm going to get the car ready and paint the outside after I glue the roof on. A lot of people were asking me about why I'm gluing the roof on first and not painting the car. So there are a few reasons that I wanna do that. So one reason is if I glue the roof on first, I'm gonna have seam sealer. So the edge, instead of it being, um, I think it's brazed, brazed welded. The, the original roofs are brazed welded because they're, they're steel. It's not gonna be brazed welded. So I'm gonna have seam sealer as like, a, like that weld almost. I'll have it panel bonded and then that edge will be seam sealed. Well, that seam sealer is gonna be either black or white or whatever color I get it, but I'd rather have that seam sealer painted. So I'm gonna come in a little bit with the paint line. And then also when I clear the whole car, then the whole thing is gonna be nice and cleared. And it's all gonna be sealed in. I won't have to worry about leaks or anything like that. Also another reason in the back, I'm going to have to when I put glue the roof down, I'm gonna have to seam seal that edge. So in the factory, that edge is all seam sealed and that comes in and it wraps around it and it's seam sealed. I also want that seam sealer painted, which I think if it wasn't painted, it'd either just be black or white. It just really wouldn't look good. So that's, that's the reason behind gluing the roof on first and then painting the car, which we should have, I, I think I should have this done in the next week or so but uh, I'm really happy that the interior is 100% just even. It looks so much better. I can start actually putting some stuff back in the interior because I'm not gonna have to risk getting overspray or anything on it because when I paint the outside of the car, I'll mask it off. So we're, uh, we're getting very close, but like I said, I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click that subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.